What's up travelers, today I'm going to be giving you some advice on how to travel Iceland, a beautiful country I was lucky enough to visit last year during a two-week road trip. We had an amazing time and also filmed four vlogs for this channel, so also go and check them out for further inspiration and ideas on what to do. In this video today I'm going to be giving you a quick advice on how to travel Iceland, what to see, what are the highlights, how much does it cost to travel around, what are the best ways to get to the country, what are the best ways to get around the country, all that is going to be covered. And I'm also going to share my suggestions for routes you could take to see some of the highlights of the country at the end of the video. First up, let's start with the highlights this country has to offer. Of course, there's Reykjavik, a very cute city. This is the capital and the world's northernmost city actually. It's right by the sea and I believe the city was the location of the first permanent settlement in Iceland. Although it is quite a small and compact town, there are loads of things to do. There are good restaurants, great museums, there's the beach, a very modern harbor area, there are hot springs, the mountains are very close, there's definitely loads of things to do. Also the very famous and popular hot springs area Blue Lagoon is very close just around the corner but I must say there are some other good alternatives to that and we will get to them in just a second. The next highlight is the Golden Circle. This is a tour you can do by yourself, you can just rent a car, drive around and this tour includes three highlights. They are all in reach in Reykjavik and this tour is absolutely doable in one day. Usually the first stop on this tour is the Pingevellir National Park, excuse my pronunciation. Galfas waterfalls follow and then there is also a Geysir area. Very beautiful and as I said, perfect day trip outside of Reykjavik. And here comes the special recommendation. When you're done with this Golden Circle tour, there is another hot spring area very close called Secret Lagoon and it's called Secret Lagoon because it's quite secret, it's not the Blue Lagoon and not as much people actually go there. It's a very nice and cheaper alternative if you want to experience the hot springs in Iceland. Now let's be honest, the main highlights of Iceland are its waterfalls and I have listed a few of the most beautiful ones right here because I just can't remember all the names. So there is the Svartifoss Falls, the Skogafoss Falls, Godafoss Falls and Detifoss. Waterfalls are all over the place in Iceland and you really can't miss them. They are all very special in their own right, so it's definitely worth seeing some of them. Now the next thing I want to recommend is the Skatafell Glacier in the south of the country. I would recommend taking a tour there, however you can also explore by yourself. Just don't wander off too far into the ice. Now my personal favorite area in Iceland is the east and especially the East Fjords. They are very, very beautiful and you feel so isolated out there. There are not many tourists coming all the way to the East. They all stay in the West, but it's definitely a place not to miss out. As I said, my favorite area, it's so peaceful and quiet. I can only recommend it. Now in the North, there are the cute towns, Myvaten and Akureyri. Back to civilization, they have everything you need if you've been living on the land for the last few days. You can get refreshed and just relax at these beautiful towns. They also have some of the best hot springs I have ever seen in Myvaten. Definitely go and make sure to check those out. Of course, these were just a few of the highlights this beautiful country has to offer. They are all quite easy to reach through the ring road. This is basically a road that goes all around the country and it's best to travel by car, you can rent a car. You can also take buses, but the buses don't run all year round and especially in the east, some connections are not very consistent. Another way to get around is by caravan. However, it is not officially allowed in Iceland to spend the night outside a designated area with your caravan. That's a little different if you are traveling with your tent. However, you can only spend one night uh, in a non-designated area if there is no camping ground around. After that one night you will have to move on and of course if the land you are trying to camp on is privately owned it is not allowed to stay there for the night. Other than camping there are quite a few other opportunities to stay the night in Iceland. In the cities like Reykjavik or Akureyri there are hostels and hotels of course. Other than that there are mostly bed and breakfasts 
or Airbnbs. I have to say though, they are quick to get fully booked and they are also quite expensive. Talking about expensive things, especially food is very pricey in Iceland. A block of cheese could cost you up to $20. A burger is between 15 and $20. A regular meal ranges from $25 to $40. That's the same with accommodation. Dorms in hostels will cost you from $30 to $40 per night per person and private rooms from $120 upwards. As I said, the best way to get around in Iceland are rental cars. They are quite reasonably priced. They range between $200 and $400 per week. To sum it up, it's a very expensive country. However, the main attractions, the nature is obviously free. There are so many places and waterfalls and glaciers to see. It's really worth visiting. They are all for free. If you want to visit the Blue Lagoon, that's another quite expensive one. It's $84 per person per day. If you're flying to Iceland, you will probably land in Keflavik airport. And yes, this is the main big airport for Reykjavik. There are two other small airports in the country, in Akureyri and also in Eglistadir. Iceland is definitely very well connected with mainland Europe and the rest of the world. Now let's get to my tour suggestions I was talking about at the beginning of the video. It really depends on how much time you have to travel Iceland. If you just have one week or under, I recommend you stay in the west of the country. There are beautiful areas in the west of the country. Don't worry, you will get a great first impression of the country. You can go to Reykjavik, do the golden circle tour I was talking about earlier. You can go to the north and see the mountains. You can go to the south, see waterfalls and glaciers. If you have a little more time, two weeks for example, you can do the whole ring road, go and see the east, really see the northeast as well and then come back to Reykjavik. If you have even more time, you might also want to get on hikes and get right to the center of the country. There aren't too many roads there, but you can definitely do a few expeditions. That's all I have to say about Iceland right now. I'm sure I didn't cover everything. If you have any questions, just ask me in the comments. I'm happy to reply. I'm now off to a new destination. I'm very excited and I hope to see you in the next video. I thank you so much for watching.